Hello everybody and welcome to Solar Gene, a new series on the channel. Today we're going to be checking out uh, anything that basically to get you started. We're going to do a bit of a beginner's guide on it so that we can get um, the moon going. That's what we're going to be aiming for. So if you've been struggling with the game, then uh, welcome to the episode. Hopefully it'll help you out. I'm not going to go into too much detail about the game itself because this isn't a review. But let's talk about actually getting onto the moon and what we're supposed to be doing from there. Uh, which I've I've had a I've had a you know about ten hours or so into the game, so I've I've had a few starts and been able to complete my uh, colonize uh, the mission that you get. So I'm I'm fairly confident that I can help you do the same. So let's get going and let's get a name him. Right, so. The start of the game, you pretty much start the same every time, depending on obviously which one you select. We're going to go for the moon because obviously it's the easier one and most people are probably picking on that. Um, the tutorial, I'm not going to worry about too much because I've done things a little bit differently. But what we want to do straight off the bat is this is your solar system. You can scroll out to have a look at it. Um, it's not obviously to scale, but the planets are obviously bigger, as you can see. So the first thing we want to do is we want to click on the moon and we want to check out what spaceport it's got because this obviously this is one that we're important looking at first because it's our mission uh the Jap japan has hold of the spaceport for the moon uh i think the theory is is that basically there is a space station somewhere that you can't see so we want to be checking out the faction fractions apparently but the faction and we have established a colony, which gives us 9,600,000, which isn't a great amount, but you only need 16 colonists to complete it. A very important thing here is this, even though this is your mission, there are other things we can do. And if you're going to struggle, then you can fast forward what I'm about to go through with you to complete before you reach night. And that's important. We'll talk about that shortly. But let's go ahead and let's sign on. Uh, you will immediately receive the money. Yeah, so 9,600,000. We want to establish a colony. Specify the location on the surface of the planet or satellite where the colony will be located. Mineral deposits depend on the location of the colony. So what you want to try and do is you want to try and get on this side here. Now, if you can't see the daylight, all you need to do is if you hold your mouse scroll, you can see it, it does rotate around. And you want to kind of aim for someone that's got, you see here, the minerals go up and down. You can just see these little bars underneath. You can see they go up and down here. Uh, so there's nothing major anywhere else. So we can pretty much, I think, go here, I think. Yeah, that'll do. Uh, we'll just leave it as Moon 73. But that's our, now our colony. Now you can uh, go to station or you can delete your station as well. You can also establish another colony. I don't suggest you do that right now. But let's go to our station and see what we can do. Now, one thing you need to remember is everything you do requires construction bots, which you don't actually physically see. Um, but the concept is, is these construction bots basically do all the work for you. So if you're struggling to do stuff, that's the reason why. And I'll explain why shortly. Now, what we want to do is we want to try and find a fairly flat land. We're in a bit of a crater area here, but we let's have a look. Um, seeing flat over here, maybe. See if we can. I don't know if this is going to be out of range, but we'll try. I mean, that's about as. We'll go for here, right? So you want to put down two shuttle uh, landing pads, which are these here. Yep. We don't need a massive area, so it's not too bad. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is solar panels, which generate electricity during the day, obviously. Your day-night cycle, obviously, on the moon is slightly different. So we've got five days of sunlight, and then we've got 20 days of sunset. Um, so we've got to be careful of that. We've basically got five days to do everything, because at this stage, you ain't going to survive the night time. If you, if you can get there before the night time, then that's probably better. But we need some solar panels to get some power in. So this little icon here is your buy. So you can see we need seven um, power cells or, or solar cells and two of the composites uh, i think they're called composites yeah they're components sorry components but what you want to do is all i'd say is is grab uh grab a hundred of them and grab a hundred of them i'm not going to jump through with what i would buy because obviously i've played the game and i've you know 
purchase things up front and stuff like that. But if you're playing for the first time, then just sit with just getting a few basics and stuff like that. Uh, now, the only thing that we have got here is a, a limited amount of soil, um, which isn't too bad because we've got an increase in rare metals and helium. Uh, which These rare metals here are quite important because if we have a look at uh, some of the contracts, uh, you'll notice that usually you'll have a, a cargo delivery. That's transuranic elements. Uh, cargo delivery, noble metals, ref refractory metals. Going to make me a liar today. Lost safe nuclear energy. Ooh, we could probably do that research, actually. Noble metals. Yeah, it's making me a liar today. Antimatter. But there is normally um, contracts that will allow you to do um, deliveries. And rare metals is one of them. Uh, right, so... Obviously, for our deliveries, the shuttles take a while, so you can see it's got another 19 minutes, so you can fast-forward a little bit. These little icons down here to fast-forward. There we go. Now, the delivery isn't made until the ship leaves, so it's almost as if it's now unloading, and then it's going again. What I'd suggest is, is don't keep... don't keep in this fast-forward. There's a lot of things that you can do, and if you're fast-forwarding, you're going to struggle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my power plant, my power cells... Up on this ridge here and you notice that i've got the components but it's still showing red now you remember i said that you've got these little construction bots they've technically built that not in real time obviously but they're now low on power so they can't build another one yet and they generate power from your your entire system so the more power you've got the better you can see here they're, they're here you see it's not obvious um but it is something to remember Another thing as well is, is some guys I've seen have told you to get people and stock up on stuff. I'd suggest otherwise because if you've got staff, they're going to start getting unhappy because they're literally stood around doing nothing. And that's important. Right, let's get another solar cell here for now. Place that there. You can see we're back on recharging because we haven't got any batteries. So we need batteries next. So let's go ahead and have a look. We need 170 metals. Uh, this type of metal here, non-ferrous metal. So let's just go ahead and buy 170 for now. We haven't got much storage, so we don't want to play around too much. We also haven't got much in the way of credits. So. Again, you're going to be waiting for that delivery. Now, if you're watching the guide ahead of your play time, then by all means, feel free to purchase what you need for both of these. Um, once you've gone both of these, then we'll have some more components unlocked. You'll also notice that one of my things is still in a green symbol, and one is like a burnt-out grounded area with like cargo pods and stuff like that these actually act as storage areas these do give you storage give you plus 10 to your storage and plus one to your liquid storage as well so when they land they then become the storage area because we've not had one land here we haven't really got anything yet okay obviously that's going to then deliver your stuff and then it's going to set off again let's just uh, fast forward it there for a minute it won't take two seconds and then we should be able to get the batteries on. Now, it doesn't matter where you place things. It's pretending... It's not giving you a visual representation, but basically there's like cables going to each of the stuff. So it really doesn't matter where you put them. I'm just going to place them here because they're out of the way and you probably ain't going to build much around this area here. And as you can see, now we've unlocked a few more things. We now have pillars, which we're going to need. We also now have lighting, outdoor lighting, which we don't really need at the moment. And storage of gases and liquids as well. We need the pillars, but as you can see, we're recharging our bots. Now that we've got a battery, you can see that we're actually charging our battery. Uh, now, the requirements is saying 60% here. This is a little bit confusing. This is you're actually providing 60% of what's required. Um, even though we've got nothing that requires power, because our battery is generating you know, charge, it's basically requiring more than what we're providing it. But it's not efficient. But we can now build pillars. So the pillar is important because this is how you start building your base. So let's go ahead and place a pillar down. We'll just place one here. Then I'm going to place a couple more down, like so. I don't want to build too many. You don't need to build pillars to place your pods on. And I'll explain that shortly. But I like to have something underneath because it looks kind of cool. So there's two things we need here that's important. Number one is a way to get up to the pillars, and number two is an airlock. Everything, obviously, to get in and out, you need an airlock. For that, we're going to need bulbs and O2. 
each pod has its own oxygen supply that contains oxygen in there. And then if you're providing oxygen to your uh, colonists, or if you've got CO2 scrubbers, that same oxygen is then basically recycled or replaced. That's the only difference to it. Um, so you don't technically need to provide oxygen. You need to keep the oxygen clean. Uh, right, so we're going to need some resources here. We've got our little, wall, uh, little uh, walkway here. Now, to rotate is Q and E. And when you place it down, it looks kind of cool. If you want to remove it, you keep hold of your stairs, your walkway, and then you go over the top of the block and click to remove. Finish construction. You can see we've got a couple more things popping in the walkways. I'm going to lab this. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have a little walkway on top of there. So they walk onto a walkway, then into an airlock. So now we need some more resources. Let's go ahead and buy some more resources. And I'm just going to buy 100 of these and 102. There we go. So we've still got plenty of credits at the moment. What we can do is we can get ourselves a nice little storage container. And I'm going to place my storage containers out of the way. Uh, just the one. We don't need any more at the moment. Uh, that may have actually... Yeah, that's took our composites off. So we need uh, our components. I call them composites. So let's go ahead and grab 200 more composites. Components. I'll remember to call it components. So you see now we've got two shuttles arriving. Oh, and the first one should be arriving in about 25 minutes. So you'll see now that we'll probably have both shuttles land. And then both of these pads will be produced here. So you can see this one I can't delete. This one I can still delete or move because it's not effectively been used yet. But our first one's landing now. And our second one should be right behind it, I believe. There we go, there's our second one. And now we've got two landing pads established. Doesn't make a major difference, it's just something to be wary of because now both of these are um, active. So you can't move them around. If you turn them off, it's a pain in the ass, as you can see. But all it does is just turns it off. That's it. So just be, be wary of that. So we'll get it to drop off the components. There we go. So important thing to note, some of these components, uh, some of these here require different components. The slanted thing is glass. Some don't require the bulbs because they don't have lighting inside them. Just be wary of that. But you can... Um, you can use any of these. They all look different. They all have different interiors and exteriors. But every one of them can be used for the same reason. I'm going to use this block here because it's actually the least amount. You can see it's slightly less. So all we can build is an airlock. So I'm going to place my airlock on top of my little pod. You'll see now that we've unlocked hallways. And we've unlocked some things as well. New objects available. See, it gives you, tells you what each one of them is. Excellent. And those are... Airlock. You can see now we've got hallways. Hallways are important. They connect all of your pods. So let's go ahead with the same block. So it's still the same highlighted one. So it's still this plain one here. And let's place a hallway in. And you see we've unlocked living quarters, warehouse, and labs. You can see it also unlocks different components for each one. Let's place a hallway there. And then let's... Uh, Let's, now, you can choose here. You don't need to do anything now in terms of this pod because you've unlocked the things that we are going to need. But let's go ahead and... Yeah, let's build a living quarter. So this is now an apartment. Same block again. Uh, as a matter of fact, actually, what we'll do is... Oh, we'll make it nice and neat. I'd like to make it nice and neat. Just go ahead and place a hallway on here and a hallway on here. Now, I'm going to show you what happens when you put it on without the little storage things. Now, you see we're here, we've got some more available items. Food, medicine, or hospitality, and you can also do uh, personal belongings in closets as well. As you can see, they quite easily sit on there. But to me, oh, not enough materials, to me, they, don't, they just look a bit odd, like being floaty. Now, you might like that, so you know it's your choice if you want to do that. Okay, 
Now you'll notice I've just unclicked off there and we've got some more things pop up here. These things we're going to be using shortly and we'll get to them. But one thing I want to talk about is interiors. You can actually do lots of things with interiors. So if you hover over, it opens up the interior. You can close your construction down. And it's just like just up there. And now what we can do is, is we're going to need doors and stuff like that. They're actually in construction, so we're going to need that. But if I click on this, it gives me an object list. Staff, object, ceiling and floor. You can alter the ceiling and you can alter the floor as well. So you can alter the, the look of it. Some of these do have requisites and some do cost a little bit more, but these ones here are all standard and fine. These do cost things and you're going to need some of these. Basically, a colonist will want somewhere to sit or to be able to lie down. So for every colonist, you're going to need something like that. We've got three apartments, which is pretty handy to be fair, because that's what we're going to need. So bear in mind, this is using electricity now. You see, we're at 100% charge. However, once the night cycle hits, we're, we're only providing 29% of the required power. So it would, well, drain our battery pretty fast. So let's go ahead and open our construction back up again. And let's have a look at the doors. Right, so we're going to need some mortars and we're going to need some glass. So let's go ahead and order some mortars and some glass. Go ahead and order 100 glass and 100 mortars. There we go. While we're at it, we'll also top up on components. And lamps or bulbs, whichever one you want to call them. Okay, what I'm also going to do as well, since we've got it flying over here, let's grab ourselves 100 rations as well. Because we're going to have colonists soon and we need them to have some food. Uh, I think that's everything we need. We might need some more oxygen soon. Yes, we have two in stock. So let's just, uh, let's just purchase some more oxygen. There we go. So we can build some more buildings. Okay, right, let's fast forward quickly to when they've delivered it. Okay, so we've now got some components to work with, so let's close this down now. The next thing I want to do is think ahead of, my of myself, because obviously I'm going to need some more components. So I need to know what these components are for us to continue. Now, I want jobs for my um, staff, and I want to be able to house them, so they need bedding. When you hire, you hire three staff at any one time. These are the things that they can do, and these are obviously the names of them, and obviously where they're coming from. We've got two robots as well, which are going to be important soon, but not right now. So let's go ahead and think about it. So we, we need three. So we've got three rooms, but we have no access yet. So we're going to need to do our rooms with stuff. We're going to need bed, and possibly going to need closets as well. The bed is the minimum. So let's go ahead and let's put a closet and a bed in each one. So you can see there we're going to need polymers and we're going to need electronics. So let's go ahead and order some polymers. Let's do 150 polymers and 100 electronics. So that's going to arrive whilst we're doing the rest of the stuff. So let's open up our construction. Right. So we want a door. We we'll place a door here and a door here. That's our airlock. To remove the door, you simply hold the door in and click on it again, and it removes the door for you, giving you resources back. Next thing I want is doors on my apartments. Uh, I want a bit of privacy, so I'm going to like have blank doors like that, leading out to the hallway. Finish construction. Now, where them doors are, you can't block them. Sometimes there are things you can do, like putting uh, steps and stuff on there, and that will block them a little bit, so be wary of that. But... When you're actually putting stuff inside, it won't let you put, put it in front of the door so they can gain access in and out. So let's uh, let's have a look. So the next thing I want to concentrate on is, is the jobs for the people as well. Obviously, we're still waiting for our polymers to be delivered. So what I want to do is I want some minerals to be basically stored up because we can sell some of them. So the bare minimum I need is electronics and motors which i've just ordered electronics for so excellent so let's go ahead and let's place one of them down let's then go to our apartments and let's put a bed in each one so you can do all your rotation everything that you want you'll see here now if you hold the shift key it will produce a second one and continue producing whilst you keep hold of the shift key. So if I press again, you can see it's another one. What happens is when you click it, you've assembled the item. 
So if you click again, you assemble another item for you to then place down again. If you let go of the shift, it'll place down the one you've just assembled. Same for our little rubbers. I think that's, yeah, that's the wrong way around. Rotate it around. You see, because I placed it and dropped it and didn't press the shift key, it just places one. If you are lazy and you want to do multiples, if you just move it like so, and keep all the shift key when you move it, it creates you another one. And the same thing for there. And then the last one you let go, and there you go. Three rooms, three basic rooms, but good enough for people. So, our next thing is to have staff and to get some more power for our mining. And because we're now mining, we also need to start consider our warehouse space as well. Let's go and hire some staff. Now, that is perfect for what I want. The industrial manufacturing, not a great deal because we're not doing industry at the moment. But we'll take it anyway because we've got two miners. If you get that, that is useless for you at the moment. So if you close again and reopen, you'll get a new selection. You can keep doing that until you get a perfect selection. What you want to try and do is get two miners and one other. Preferably something like uh, medical or research or something like that, because you can do the research shortly after. Now they're being delivered, let's go ahead and let's get some more. Hallway. I'm just going to place two hallways here. And because I'm a stickler for it, I'm going to place uh, here, you, here, and you here. Go. And then let's place. Now I want something a little bit cooler, so I'm going to place this here. And then I'm going to put this as warehouse. As soon as you place down the warehouse, you get industrial and you get power plant. There we go. Oh, we're out of material, so let's order some more material. You're going to be constantly ordering material back and forth. Let's see. Do we have enough for a door? Excellent. Now I want to put a nice large door on my storage. There we go. And then let's make it look a little bit different because everything looks the same. So if we click on it, we go to floors and I want to make it look like that. There we go. Look at that. Uh, now, because it, we've got storage now, we now need to place stuff but inside stuff. The biggest one is this one here, which gives you 48 storage, uh, but it requires two floors. So basically you put another pod on top and it doubles the height. But these smaller ones here also do really well. Look at six. There we go, six. So if we... I mean a little bit and now people don't need to get to these shelvings they are literally a representation of your storage space now you notice there i actually press shift for both of them but the second one when i put it down it kicked me out because i've no materials left so i can't produce another one drops it out you also see now our storage has dropped down to two percent even though we're ordering more things you'll also notice now we've now got a happy state and you can see it's dropping down quite rapidly this is how happy the colonists are. If it gets to zero, they, they disappear and leave you off. And you're screwed. If they're unhappy, you need to see why. This is because they have nowhere to sit. So we need sofas in our hallways. Remember I mentioned the hallway sofas? Best ones to do are these ones. They don't make much difference for either or. I think one might make them slightly better. But we want this one here because at the moment this is cheap and we can replace these. So let's go ahead and place there we go three for our three people we got our ration packs which is giving us 115 days of food and 21 days of oxygen none of these staff have jobs so that's also making them unhappy so we've got one mining facility here let's get another mining facility and these figures here that you see max produced per hour is what is max produced on this planet so that's accurate for what you are on you can see there's no atmosphere there's no liquid on the surface or anything like that so you're not going to get anything um, we can get some gaseous uh, the h2o i think it is and we can get obviously all of our minerals here let's go ahead and uh, let's get the well and get some gaseous so now if you click on that there you can then select a person and they are now assigned to that job then we go for this one here and they're assigned to that job. So only one person's without a job now. So they're going to get bored. Um, 
they're going to probably get a little bit unhappy. So you've got to keep an eye out on that. Uh, but we can do something about that, and we will do something about that, because this here generates ice, and we can melt down the ice. But that's... Uh, you don't need to worry too much about that just yet. We should be able to keep the happiness up a bit. But you'll also notice now we're getting resources. So if we drop this down, you'll notice these resources here are going to start climbing. So we'll start getting, there you go, soil, water, ice, rare metals, and there are rations. And that's all we got at the moment. Notice our action is dropping slightly because obviously we're using it. Our ice is going up nicely. So now we're set with three people. So we've got a colony already established. We've got another nine days. We've got three staff. We need 16 in total. So we need jobs for 16 people. So let's go ahead and start looking at things that we can do. So what we can do is if I select one of this here, these here all require something. Hallway obviously is just your hallways. Your airlocks, your entrance. Your living quarters is for your staff to live. Try and keep your living quarters um, to what staff you have. However, in a pickle, you can use the sofas as sofa beds. Industrial industry is um, the new one that we're going to have a look at in a minute. Power plant, we're going to need something out of that. And we've got the hospital and we've got the lab. So our extra staff was industry. So let's go ahead and set up some industry. Now, you can actually do something a little different. If I go here, and I place four here, I can then place my four industries. Gives me a lot of extra stuff, for even, even for other sites as well, because obviously you're now making different materials. Just close that down. So if I build my industry here, like so. Uh, we don't have enough materials, so we need some more oxygen. Go ahead and order some more oxygen. You'll also notice that our oxygen's now dropped to three days in the bottom. So you're using the oxygen that you're replenishing with. Okay, right. So we're going to need a... Uh, where are we going to put it? I'm going to probably put my airlock here. So you can see this here is it's not attached to our colony, but we can use this. Um, you don't have to have all your stuff together in one place. You can have them separate. But while that's building, let's have a look. Uh, we're going to need some more metals. So let's go ahead and get some more metals. Let's get another 170 so I can build another generator. And uh, Sorry, another power plant. Uh, battery. Let's grab a couple more solar panels. Place them up here. Oh, three will do fine for now. You see, we're only still generating 26%. We were, at, we were actually eating into our battery power. Just be wary of that. Okay, so let's uh, let's fast forward. So we got our deliveries. I'll be right back shortly. Okay, so we got our deliveries. So let's go ahead and place our last industrial. The next thing we need now is an airlock, which is going to go on the one I've just placed the door on. Go. Then I'm going to place a pillar here. A uh, nice walkway there. A ladder here. Go. We'll finish the construction. Actually, we won't because we need a door. Place a door on there. Now we'll finish the construction. Right, so now we've got industrial. Now, you know what I said you can go up and down? We've got an ice melter. This thing is huge. You can see it takes up more than one layer. It actually takes three layers. Uh, so we're going to want to go back to our items here i'm going to basically place oh i might not fit it but we'll give it a go you can see it actually puts the layers inside um not sure oh yeah that's why it's secured it completely uh, which we definitely don't want oh that's because i used an airlock so let's get rid of them because i'm an idiot so if we go back to here, dismantle building, let's remove our airlocks that we've just put on because it's created a secondary building. Let's go back to here and set it to industrial. There we go. Uh, what we're short on. So we're short on 
more. Let's get some more components. Let's get 200 more components. And we'll get some more bulbs while we're at it as well. Okay, let's see if we can squeeze it in. I don't think we can. We may not have the materials to squeeze it in. Objects, we don't have the materials. And I don't think it's going to fit in there. So let's fast forward once again. Okay, so we've now got an ice melter. You see, we can actually fit it in. So I'm not going to expand. Go. So now that we've got an ice melter, we can now, if we click on the building, where we're already in the building, we're going to assign a staff and we're going to assign our industrial. There we go. So he'll now go over to that and he will melt the ice to create water. Obviously, at the moment, we haven't got any use for the water, but we will have some use for the water at a later stage. But you can see all three of our staff have now got jobs, so our state of happiness should stay relatively the same. Um, if you want to know why they're not happy, if you just click on them, you get this little drop-down box here. You'll see here fatigue and hunger are low. Um, fatigue, obviously, just once he goes to bed, he'll regenerate. Hunger is one of them where, obviously, he wants food. We can improve that by giving him Japanese cuisine. Um, which is going to be in part two of the guide. This is basically the start of your colony. From here, you can experiment with as much as you want, as long as you keep your staff happy and you provide them with jobs and bedding and somewhere to sit. So the more staff you have, the more seating and stuff like that you need to do. So just keep these hallways like this, so you've got the long periods, uh, like long, long places where you can place some of these these down so for me i go along here and keep like every now and then put in like uh, sofas here and here vending machines also help because they, if they're hungry they can just grab a bite to eat which helps so yeah so it's not too bad now another thing to point out this person here has got a job if that runs out of ice he still has a job so he's not going to be unhappy he's just going to wander around and chill out for a bit until well he'll keep trying to melt the, the water ice um, which isn't a bad thing because obviously he's doing a job so he's not going to be upset well another thing we've got to keep an eye out is that our power supply uh, we've still got four more days of light so we've got four more days basically to complete our task which is doable so that's it for this episode hopefully it's got you started if there's any questions or anything like that please let me know in the comment section as always and hopefully yeah hopefully it's got you going and you can enjoy this game because it's pretty cool for the it's only an alpha at the moment but it is pretty cool and there's a lot of potential for it there's a lot of um balances and stuff like that that need to be resolved but overall it's a really good game oh we have a crisis of bulb shortage so that's going to be a problem for us because we need bulbs um but hopefully that won't affect us too much how many bulbs to be we ordered some more bulbs we've got some bulbs at least so as I said, that's it for this episode. If you enjoyed this, then please give me a thumbs up. Remember to hit that comment section if you want to leave any comments. And why not join us on the Discord? But until next time, everybody, take care for now. And I shall see you all in the next one. Bye-bye for now.